Z Company, formerly Blackwater, has a fully functional airship housed at this World War II facility in Weeksville, North Carolina. Polar 400 is uh, the prototype vehicle for a series of airships that we have, uh, Polar 500, Polar 1000, 2000, um, that do, sur will do surveillance for DOD, uh, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, they basically stay up longer uh, and carry more than equivalent fixed-wing UAVs like the famous Predator. Um, they're much more low cost, and it's basically a way to, uh, for the U.S. government to provide a lot more surveillance, uh, a lot more cost effectively than they do now. It's roughly the size of the Goodyear blimp and holds 4,000 cubic meters of helium. It's housed in a giant hangar 1,000 feet long and 200 feet high. It has two giant clamshell doors, 420 tons apiece. They run on full-gauge railroad track each one powered by its own diesel engine. The vehicle uh, holds about uh, 400 pounds of payload. Um, most of these airships can go, um, because you can load different amounts of helium on board, they can carry a little more, a little less, depending on how high you want to fly or how long you want to fly. Um, so we have some trade space between fuel, payload, and altitude. It's remote and uh, it has, it's what we call optionally manned. So you can fly it completely remotely from both a remote control box as well as a ground station. Uh, where we have um, uh, computers that monitor, you know, they have a map display and monitor the situation and the, uh, the things on board the aircraft. And at the same time, it has a cockpit so that uh, someone can use it if we want to use it domestically here in the United States. Someone can just get in and fly it. We don't have to get the FAA to, you know, allow an unmanned vehicle to be in the area. We can put someone on board. Well, the propulsion system is sort of the secret sauce, as it were. Um, because it allows us to operate with fewer crew and in more weather because we've got control in all three directions. So the way we were able to do that is put um, hydraulic motors on the side of the bag. Um, normally in order to hang an engine that would drive a prop of that size, it would be a three, four, five hundred pound engine that would go up there, which is too much weight, just to sit on, to, on, the, uh, on the bag, the, uh, the hull, which is just a flexible structure. Um, instead, we have a little 30 pound um, hydraulic motor that goes up there and it provides 100 horsepower to that engine, uh, in, uh, to that motor, I'm sorry, that propeller. Additionally, we have a little gearing system that turns that prop 90 degrees up and down so that uh, we can provide vertical thrust to take off like a helicopter. It's also the same hydraulic um, propulsion system we have up at the nose. Um, the only thing is those props don't vector, but they do reverse. So um, just here, they will go um, reverse. So for the lateral prop, that gives you left and right. And for the stern prop, that gives you a, a forward and reverse propulsion. Z also has a number of armored vehicles and aircraft, including the Hughes 500 Little Bird helicopter. An amazing way to get to work. They also designed and built the Grizzly, an entrant in the Army and Marine Corps' MRAP-2 program, which was later canceled. Subsequently, they entered the competition to replace the Humvee with the up-armored Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, although eventually losing out to larger defense contractors. Another design is this portable shooting range made out of two shipping containers that's safe enough to be placed in the parking lot of a local police station. Z operates in a lot of remote locations throughout the world and uh, in a lot of those areas power is scarce so what we have built here is um, a test wind turbine to, that powers our manufacturing building at least partially um, and the idea is to eventually take it overseas uh, and assist there.